During the Second World War, executions occurred inside concentration camps all across Germany and the Nazi-occupied lands. Many of these took place in public, in front of hundreds of other inmates, to strike fear into the hearts of the prisoners. But there were some attempts by the SS to conceal their crimes, and to execute as many people as they could in secret. Concentration camps often utilised the local landscapes, and parts of these became used for executions. For example, in Mauthausen, there was a huge stone quarry, with the stairs of death leading to the site, where slave labour was used on a mass scale. But the SS would also carry out executions, throwing people off the cliff and playing torturous games around this. But inside of Buchenwald, one of the largest concentration camps, there was part of the camp which was used for torture and to execute prisoners in secret away from the eyes of the other inmates. Today we look at the executions of the forest of Buchenwald, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Buchenwald Concentration Camp was established on the Ettersberg Hill near Weimar, and it was a camp where 280,000 inmates were imprisoned during its time in operation from 1937 to 1945. It's believed that over 56,000 prisoners never made it out of the camp alive as they succumbed to the conditions of the evil site. Even the former commandant would become a victim of Buchenwald as he was executed at his own camp. The prisoners held at Buchenwald were those who Hitler believed had no place inside of his empire or Reich, and he believed that these people were subhuman and deserved to be exterminated. But to ensure that he got what he could from them, he would force them to conduct backbreaking work, often in the Buchenwald quarry, and in the gates of Buchenwald told inmates what to expect of the camp. Jedem das Sein was on the gates which translates as, to each his own, and to the SS this phrase was interpreted to mean they could do as they pleased to brutalise the prisoners every single day. The inmates would somehow at the end of the war communicate with the US Army through Morse code, sending a desperate message saying, to the Allies, to the Army of General Patton, this is Buchenwald Concentration Camp, SOS, we request help, they want to evacuate us, the SS wants to destroy us. One of the biggest killers at Buchenwald was the camp conditions which were deliberately poor. The inmates were kept in a constant state of starvation, they were forced to conduct backbreaking labour, and many became very ill, and the policy at the site was to exterminate as many people as they could through working. Many of the prisoners who could not work were executed through shooting and hanging, but inside the camp there were summary executions of at least 1,000 men who were shot for a gunshot to the neck inside the neck shooting facility. It's believed also that up to 8,000 Soviet POWs were executed in this way in the same facility, being tricked into thinking they were getting a medical exam. The inmates were even subjected to terrible experiments to test the use of white phosphorus, and they were heavily burned in Buchenwald by this. Many argued that the doctors of Buchenwald were Nazi legally appointed executioners who carried out huge killings. The camp was completely colossal, and it had around 136 subcamps that served it, and much of the workforce directly contributed to the German war effort, as they were involved in the armaments production. The SS also rented out prisoners to private firms to make more money, but the guards there were known for being evil. They would often beat prisoners incredibly severely, sometimes to death, and they were encouraged by the commandants to brutalise inmates on a daily basis. But Buchenwald was found inside of a beech forest, and this huge forest overlooks the city of Weimar, and within the forest was the camp. The term Buchenwald is German for beech forest, but this place which was once peaceful, would become during the Second World War a brutal and tragic place, and like the Nazis would do at Mauthausen, they utilised the local area and the forest to become part of their plans for mass murder. The forest would become a site where many prisoners would be buried, and at the end of the Second World War and in the following decades, it was learned that there were many graveyards inside the forest, and many of these were then marked. But the forest of Buchenwald was to begin with, used as a torture device, and there was one brutal SS guard who became known as the Hangman of Buchenwald, and many of his crimes were carried out inside of the forest. Walter Gerhard Martin Sommer was an SS Hauptschaufuhrer who became infamous for his torture at Buchenwald, and he was considered a sadist who would execute many people. He was a man who was even investigated by Heinrich Himmler for his brutality, and Sommer was even thrown out of Buchenwald for his evil torture 
as Himmler believed that he went too far. He would take a number of prisoners into the forests of Buchenwald, and these inmates would have infringed on the camp's rules. They may have committed tiny crimes, such as stealing a piece of fruit from a tree as they were starving, and this was sometimes considered a crime of necessity. But Martin Sommer would then take these into the forest, where he had a number of trees which were prepared. These inmates would then be strung up from the trees, and they were suspended from their arms which had been tied behind their backs. This special form of torture was conducted inside of the woods, and the screams of the victims were so intense and loud that the inmates named this area of the site the Singing Forest. This was medieval-style torture, and it was Sommer's speciality, and the arms would become dislocated, and sometimes the prisoners were in so much agony that they were killed by this, and some would faint, and they were often left like this for some time. Martin Sommer had a particular distaste for members of the clergy, and inside of the forest he would carry out two executions that were considered some of the most evil of the whole Second World War. Otto Nurura was a priest who had been initially sent to Dachau, before he was sent on to Buchenwald, and he faced frequent torture there. But he was locked up in the prison, and he would share his food rations with other prisoners who were weaker. But he suspected a trap, as he had been asked to perform a banned baptism inside the camp, and following doing this, he was then sent to the punishment block, and was brutalised by Sommer. But Sommer to then send a clear message, took Otto Nurura and Matthaus Spanlang, another Austrian priest, deep into the forest. He then forced the two men to take off their clothes, and the pair were then crucified inside the forest, being hanged upside down, and Otto Nurura, it's believed, managed to stay alive for 34 agonising hours before he died. This all happened inside of the singing forest, but there were other executions that took place there. At some point the SS ordered the prisoners to collect wood, and inside of the forest they built a gallows, which they used to execute dozens of inmates, often at the same time, on the wooden structure. On the 26th of April 1942, a Polish forced labourer, who worked in a courtyard at Buchenwald, was beaten to the point where he lost consciousness by a German policeman named Albin Gottwald. Taking revenge, two Polish inmates then stabbed Gottwald to death on a forest path, and these two assassins then managed to flee. One of them was apprehended after his escape, but in reprisal for the death of one of the guards, the SS went into overdrive, ordering executions. On the 11th of May 1942, 19 prisoners from Buchenwald were taken to the place in the woods where Gottwald's body had been found. The SS then ordered prisoners to build three gallows. Two of them had ten hooks on them, and one was a single gallows. The 19 Polish prisoners were then positioned behind the gallows, and the man who had been apprehended was brought forward. But shockingly, the SS then gathered hundreds of Polish workers to watch what they did next. The executions began at 10.50am, and one by one the inmates were executed slowly in front of the crowd, on the single gallows. But then they were all hanged on the two group gallows and were displayed for some time. But this was not a new thing. Within the forests of the camp, over the war years, there were many more gallows that were created to hang the inmates. It was a common sight, as inmates would be taken from the camp into the forest, and they would never return again. On the 4th of April 1945, the US Infantry Division overran Erdruf, a subcamp of Buchenwald. It was partially evacuated over the following weeks, and when the Americans arrived at the site, they were given a hero's welcome, but they came across many different people who were suffering. One liberator described what he saw and said, I asked to see one of the barracks, it happened to be occupied by Czechoslovaks. When I entered, men crowded around, tried to lift me to their shoulders. They were too weak. Many of them could not get out of bed. I was told that this building had once housed 80 stabled horses. There were 1,200 men in it, five to a bunk. The stink was beyond all description. They called the doctor. We inspected his records. They were only names in a little black book, nothing more. Nothing about who these men were, what they had done or hoped. Behind the names of those who had died, there was a cross. I counted them. They totaled 242 out of 1,200 in one month. As we walked out of the courtyard, a man fell dead. Two others, they must have been over 60, were crawling towards the latrine. I saw it, but will not describe it. The forests of Buchenwald were truly barbaric and brutal, and it was known as the Singing Forest, 
as the horrors were conducted there within the area. It was a place where torture and execution took place, and the inmates knew when the prisoners went into the forest, they probably would not come back. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.